the wait is over. Well, for me at least. You guys are gonna have to wait another year or so until you get your, your hands on one. We're in Spain and we've got a first ride coming at you from Yamaha's Tenere 700. We got invited to ride a European spec bike in Spain. So this is, I would say a 90% first ride, uh, what we're doing here. It's not a, a full ride because some specs may change, suspension settings, um, who knows if the same tires are gonna be on it. But this is basically the bike that the US will be seeing uh, in the second half of 2020. Start with the engine first. 689cc parallel twin it's Yamaha CP2 engine, which is a cross plane crank configuration with firing order every 270 degrees. It is a killer motor for this application. We love that motor in the SXR, we love it in the MT-07, and it's actually even better in this bike. They've done a few changes to the engine to make it a better setup for adventure riding, but nothing internally the engine. The engine is identical to the other two bikes in terms of every spec inside the engine. Same compression ratio, same cam, same valve diameters, everything's the same. The only changes are the fueling, the EFI mapping. It's got a different air box, obviously, and a different muffler, and that's pretty much it. And what it does is it, the, the torque curve is much flatter on this bike than it is on the other two bikes, which have kind of a revy character that builds and then drops away kind of quickly. This is, is much flatter and, and usable almost everywhere, and it has much more over rev than the other two bikes do. And I think this is actually the best iteration of this motor that's, that's been put out yet. Other changes uh, regarding the engine, the final gearing is a little bit different on this bike than the other two street bikes. It's a 1546, where the, the street bikes are like a 1642 or 43. Much lower gearing gives it a real spunky, you know, kick out of the corners and, and it's really fun. One thing that's also similar with those bikes is there is no traction control and no ride modes. There's no electronic help on this engine whatsoever. But the engine itself is torquey, it's tractable, it's fun to ride, it's got a really good clutch on it. You can really feel what the rear tire is doing with that clutch. You can modulate the power really well. So overall, does it need trash control? I still think it probably does, but that means added expense. And th their whole goal of this bike is a bike that's available to everyone and is affordable. We don't know what the price is gonna be yet, but if we go off the 9,300 euro price, it's quite a bit less than the competitors. It does have one electronic aid that is important though, and that's ABS. It's switchable for the first time on a Yamaha adventure bike. You can switch it right up on the dash, turn it on or turn it off. There's no off-road mode per se with a front ABS and rear lock. It's either on or off, nothing in between. So getting to the brakes, got dual 282 millimeter front rotors with Brembo calipers and a, a Yamaha uh, master cylinder. And at the back, we've got a Brembo master cylinder and a Brembo single piston caliper. And the brakes are probably one of the letdowns for me on this bike, really. I expected them to, to, to work well, and they do their job, but they don't have a lot of feel and they don't have a lot of power. Up front, you pull the lever in, it's doing its thing, you pull it tighter, and it really doesn't add much more power. It doesn't get progressively get stronger like you would expect on on, a, on a, a dirt bike or an adventure bike where the more you grab, the tighter it gets. It just doesn't have any more power. And at the rear, the rear is the real, the real bum out. It's got a very mushy pedal feel and then finally when it does actuate, it either locks up or it runs into the ABS. There's no in between. So the rear brake is essentially almost useless. Suspension on this thing, 200 millimeter travel in the front from a 43 millimeter KYB. At the back, you got a piggyback KYB with 200 millimeters of travel. So 210, 200. And it's more than adequate for this bike. Really plush initially, but goes through, you know, stutter bumps and rocks and things like that beautifully. It, it rolls right over the stuff. It handles that stuff really well. When you start going a little faster and you start hitting some bigger G outs and things like that, you start to realize that it's a little soft for, you know, our American style of riding uh, adventure bikes where we, we think we're on enduro bikes and we want to ride them like that. So you start running into uh, bottoming out the suspension, things like that. But it's kind of a warning system to let you know, okay, you're reaching the, the limits of what this chassis can handle. So it's not really a bad thing. For me, I would like to see it a little stiffer. I think it would be, be even much, much better than it already is. But overall, 
it's good. When it does bottom out, it doesn't deflect, it doesn't do anything weird. You just realize you've, you've hit the end of the stroke. On the street, it's unbelievable. It's actually a really, really good street bike, especially with having a 21 inch front tire. You expect it to kind of be a little vague on the street and, and weird and a little sketchy. And on the street, it's, it's really, really good. It's connected, it's planted, and you know what it's doing all the time. In the dirt, it's light, it's flickable. Uh, it weighs, uh, claimed weight is 449 pounds, which is less than almost every other bike on the market. And it shows, it feels very light, very flickable. Uh, it responds to foot peg input really fast. Bar input as well, not as fast. So if you, if you just put pressure on those pegs, the bike just darts whichever direction you need it. So it's really nice when you get into some rocky sections or something where you need to change direction really quickly. And that I really liked about the bike. In the dirt though, the front end felt a little bit vague. And I, I think maybe it has to do with the tires that are on it, Pirelli Scorpion Rallies. They're, they're like a 70-30 tire or a 50-50 tire. They're definitely not a dirt-focused tire. So they do the street really well. That means they gotta give up some on the dirt, and, and they do. You turn it into the, on the front, and you try to get it on the side of the tire, and you lose some confidence pretty quickly once you get on the side of the tire in the dirt. Ergonomics, pretty comfortable. Um, obviously, it, it's, it's not the, the exact you know, high, flat seat that we saw on the T7 Concept or the, the Rally Raid, it's kind of dropped back down in a more traditional adventure bike style with a tank that comes up in front of you a little bit more. But it's narrow, right here at the foot pegs, at your knees. It's nice and narrow, which helps with that light feel. And then once you get up on the tank a little bit, it feels a little bit wide, especially if you're wearing knee braces and motocross boots or off-road boots. Foot runs into the side of the clutch and it runs in up here and that makes the foot pegs feel small. Standing up, it's a nice reach of the bars. You're not bent over too far feels very, very, very comfortable. Windscreen protection, it's actually pretty good. Uh, we were riding in a motocross helmet with goggles, and every once in a while, a stray bug would make it through and smack you in the face, but for the most part, through the wind over, over me, I'm five foot 10, and I had no problems with buffeting or the wind blowing me around, it was very comfortable. So the question everyone's gonna ask is, does it live up to the hype? You've been seeing this bike for two years, Everyone's expecting it to be the, the next latest and greatest adventure bike. And all I can say at this point, it's a good bike. It's even actually a great bike, but is it an exceptional bike? I'm not quite sure. I think they, they may have overhyped the bike, which is a shame because it really is a great bike.